Welcome to this module 16 on manufacturing systems technology. Uh, in the last module, we were talking mostly about how uh, translation strategies can be implemented across a variety of uh, different uh, processors. And uh, we tried to uh, understand what are the kind of modalities possible for translating between two processors independently or using a neutral file format in between where there is one translation only as a preprocessor into the file format and another as a post processor of the file format into the, um, uh, the version which would be understood by the machine. Okay, so, we also talked about the various different neutral file formats or data exchange formats and their structure and then we went on to uh, sort of initiate what all this data would be needed for in terms of computer aided manufacturing or CAM. So, the computer aided manufacturing as we discussed last time really uh, uh, necessitates a, a good process sequence where the manufacturing processes which are involved therein to manufacture the parts have to be uh, done in a sequential in a proper manner, uh, you know in a logical manner so that there are no problems related to as such the process and therefore, every manufacturing activity necessitates something called a process plan. And uh, the process plan is uh, although really a manual experiential plan uh, which comes up because of the people who are associated directly with the process, but then there is a strategy which is involved in sort of gathering together all that information data, this experiential data of uh, personnel involved in uh, manufacturing directly uh, and trying to put a logical sequencing to all this so that because it is a vast amount of information. Okay, so, this is uh, the variant of this kind of a uh, uh, process planning is known as computer assisted process planning or computer aided process plan. So, therefore, I think we had just mentioned this before that the process plan serves as an integration link between the design and manufacturing and is very important for designing a process. And uh, we will be typically looking at uh, different steps to develop a process plan, uh, particularly a computer aided process plan in this particular topic. And uh, there are two different approaches for this process planning, one is called a variant and another is called a generative approach for process plan. And then obviously, we have knowledge based process plan in the <coughs> CAPP or computer aided process planning. So, let us now look at some of the uh, manufacturing processes and I think I had discussed yesterday that whenever we are talking about a cap, in fact, a perfect uh, uh, or, or close to a perfect SIMS or computer aided manufacturing system has all uh, in, in on an industrial scale has really been achieved at the level of machine shop. The operations like assembly shop or you know some other uh, press shop or whatever, you know those uh, may not be very close to a completely computer integrated manufacturing system, uh, but definitely assembly is in fact one of the hardest uh, processes where uh, there is a substantial contribution from uh, you know manually driven processes and therefore, uh, thinking about a totally computer automated process uh, would really not be a very good uh, idea for such complex assembly processes. So, we would therefore, be liking to focus mostly on the machining side uh, when we are talking about CAPP and uh, let us look into the some of the manufacturing processes involved in uh, doing the machining. So, some fundamental processes uh, exist like turning, drilling, milling, grinding. Probably all of you are quite aware of the basics of these process and uh, <coughs> then there can be some other processes. Uh, which are not really the primary processes, but are used for uh, different variants of manufacturing like there are processes, uh, there are cutting processes where you can do sheet metal cutting, there are forming operations where you do bending and pressing of the sheets, production of electronic circuits, uh, boards, soldering, uh, so on and so forth. These are some of the uh, not so important, but yet you know. Uh, the uh, secondary level processes which are available uh, as far as the manufacturing process domain goes. So, <laughs> turning operations looking into the details uh, of turning operations is a common and versatile machine process and uh, it produces all different symmetrical shapes like cylindrical, conical and some irregularly shaped internal or external surfaces. Okay. Typically, they are done on a rotating workpiece. all of you must have seen a turning center or a lathe. 
and uh, the typical parts um, that would be needed to be processed on a turning um, center are things like let us say pins or shafts, spindles, handles, various other components having o ring grooves, holes, threads both external and internal, many other shapes so on so forth. And uh, obviously, cutting operations can be performed on lathe including straight turning, taper turning, profiling, turning, external grooving, facing, phase grooving, drilling, boring, internal grooving, cutting off, threading, knurling and this is shown here, illustrated here. So, shown in the next figure uh, right here which talks about straight turning operation for example. You know these are all variants of when the rotating the workpiece rotates and the tool moves uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the particular workpiece. So, there is a straight turning operation being done here where there is a single point cutting tool as you can see which engages with the uh, workpiece or rotating workpiece and it uh, tries to peel off the metals. Uh, it is a taper turning here in this particular figure where uh, the tool moves not parallel to the axis, but at an angle to a particular axis you can see this particular angle theta being described by the tool path with respect to the central axis of the workpiece. Profiling where the same complex topology like that on a door handle for example, has is being illustrated by creating a tool path which kind of tries to create the shape you know. So, the tool was somewhere here and you know along this red mark the tool moves uh, up to the axial center here and obviously, because it is a rotational symmetry the workpiece is rotating you will have this shape or feature put in or embedded in uh, or, or, or made from that particular cylindrical uh, workpiece. And then you have other operations like turning and external grooving you can see this is an external groove uh, which is being <laughs> made you know uh, by virtue of turning and uh, then you have facing. So, one side uh, of the particular cylindrical uh, bar being stock being used here is, is being faced. Uh, so, there is a smooth finishing at this particular end here and it goes all the way up till this this area this is small area is completely uh, taken off from the material. There can be face grooving. So, in a face you can actually further make grooves here as illustrated in this particular uh, area obviously, the groove goes all the way circularly from this end to this end uh, just because of the rotation of the work piece which takes place. Uh, there is a forming operation where you use instead of a, a single point cutting tool a forming tool you know which has a certain topology the negative of which you want to uh, cut off on the uh, the work piece which is rotating. Okay. And then you have other operations like boring and internal grooving here for example, you can see that uh, uh, the tool really uh, is <coughs> creating uh, uh, an impression by you know uh, by boring a hole onto one side of uh, the particular uh, the work piece in, in question. You can also have a drilling operation here the drilling tool uh, is, is taking off material from this end of the central work piece while it is rotating. Okay. Uh, you have a cutting off operation again on the lathe where you can completely cut off a section of um, metal from the remaining portion of the bar which is rotating uh, on the spindle side of the, the, the lathe machine. You have a threading operation where again there is a threading tool and it has given a certain rate of movement in uh, the direction parallel to the direction of the rotating axis and uh, you can actually see these threads being cut at a certain pitch you know based on the movement of this tool. Uh, with respect to the uh, work piece. Okay. Well, you also have knurling operation where this uh, texture, this rough texture normally introduced for uh, increasing the grip etcetera on the in the bar handle is being done. This is a knurling tool you know which provides that texture. So, it is a sort of a form tool, but uh, it, it has a, a you know instead of the a major amount of material being formed. Uh, by virtue of the tool it has only a very small texture on the surface which gets imprinted onto the work piece. So, these are some of the operations which are performed on the lathe machine. We will have similar operations uh, for you know for drilling different holes or creating different holes of different aspect ratios within materials. So, drilling of course, is uh, a very common again another very common machining operation and uh, it can produce either holes or blind holes you know across uh, work pieces. And uh, these holes are then further used for the assembly processes for all these work pieces. So, you can uh, you know um, sort of whatever you have drilled uh, can be utilized for holding fasteners 
for example, rivets or screws or bolts, you know. And these fasteners can further ensure that you can hold two uh, objects together as an assembly, so that if one of them is imparted with the motion, the other automatically starts uh, to get dragged along, you know, and uh, translates the motion from one end to another end in this manner. So, to perform uh, the drilling operation, a cylindrical rotary end cutting tool called a drill is employed. So this is a drill, you know, this is how it looks like. You have a flute, and these are some things that probably all of you may have uh, at some point of time done in your or seen in your basic manufacturing workshop related activities. So, uh, obviously it is also a peeling process and the peeling happens really towards this, tip he this tip here, the drill tip here and uh, there are uh, two ends of this particular uh, tip and the peeling would happen uh, diametrically opposite, uh, one here and one diametrically opposite to it across the drilling uh, uh, periphery. Okay. And uh, so that is how drilling is operated. You have various forms of drilling, different types of drilling operations. You can have a core drilling, step drilling, uh, as the name shows, it incorporates a step, you know, something like this, counter boring, uh, counter sinking, reaming, center drilling, gun drilling, high pressure coolant, etc. So, I am not going into the various details of the different kind of drilling operations, it is not really a manufacturing process related course, but uh, you can understand that uh, the basic idea here of motion. Uh, and uh, if we really wanted to automate such a system would be that you rotate the tool, you know, and then make the workpiece translate against uh, the rotating tool, so that there is peeling off of the material by, uh, by virtue of this relative motion between the tool and the workpiece. So, <coughs> that is another operation. So, uh, obviously, uh, if, you, if you look at just the basic differences between the different types. Uh, of uh, drilling and associated processes, you know, there can be associated processes like boring, counter boring, spot facing, counter seeking, rimming and tapping. Uh, and uh, they have various uh, purposes. For example, boring involves enlarging an already existing drilled hole or counter boring only uh, is done on one end of the drilled hole, so that it is enlarged and uh, typically it is done for counter shank of a screw or uh, in terms of its head sitting inside the surface, you know, so that is uh, called counter shanking on a surface. So, counter boring on a surface and so, uh, uh, you have to enlarge the hole on one side of uh, the threaded hole which exists inside the uh, work piece where this uh, screw is set in. Uh, you have spot, spot facing which is finishing off a small surface area around the opening of a hole. Okay, uh, counter sinking of course is similar to counter boring except that the hole is enlarged at one end in a conical manner. So, if the screw that we are using has a conical head, then counter sinking, counter sinking is the best process for doing that. And uh, the idea is to accommodate the conical set of a flat head screw uh, inside, so that there is no protrusion on the surface of this head uh, and the surface is as such planar. Uh, because of this counter sinking operation on the surface. So, it is something like uh, if you had a hole uh, like this, you are essentially trying to now do a counter sinking on that hole by creating a conical uh, surface. So, that otherwise the, the bolt would have sat somewhere here okay, and there would have been a perturbation which would have been uh, a protrusion away from the surface. Now, in this case the bolt can actually sit here and there is no protrusion from the surface. So, there are reaming operations, reaming is a sizing process uh, used to make an already drilled hole dimensionally more accurate to provide a very smooth surface based on that. Uh, tape, tapping operation of obviously to cut internal threads uh, in work pieces by using threaded tool with multiple cutting teeth. The tool is also called a tap as uh, I think some of you may have already seen uh, on the manufacturing processes workshop. So, these are associated processes of the drilling. Uh, again, let us come to milling operation. So, obviously, mill is used uh, to produce a variety of shapes such as flat contoured and helical surfaces. Uh, very uh, handy uh, manufacturing process for gear cutting operations and also for threads in uh, some of the cases. So, the process involves a simultaneous rotating motion of a, uh, of a tool uh, surface and uh, you know there is a linear translation of the work piece with reference to the rotating tool. The uh, 
uh, spindle or the shaft which contains the tool is also known as an arbor uh, across which the tool is being uh, put in. And uh, uh, so, just as in the in the lathe process, you have a turning workpiece and a linearly moving tool. It is the other way around. It's a turning tool and the linear moving workpiece in this particular operation. So, based on the direction of the cutter with respect to the proceed of the uh, the workpiece, you can classify milling as up milling or down milling. Um, obviously, if the um, uh, the the cutter is in the similar direction to the movement of the workpiece, it's called down milling, and vice versa for up milling. A uh, large variety of milling cutters is uh, used to uh, produce different shapes. Uh, some of the shapes include, uh, you know, let's say, uh, if you wanted to deal with flat surfaces, you use a plain milling cutter. If you are uh, doing uh, sort of slots on the surface, you have to use a side milling cutter. If you have a, a T slot to be milled on a, a sub substrate, you can use a T slot cutter for that. So this is a combination of the shaping and the generation process. So you have a milling cutter in the shape of the slot itself, and the slot gets uh, machined, you know, uh, because of the shape of the milling cutter. Okay, so basically, this is the workpiece slot, which is being machined by virtue of this milling cutter. So you can have form milling cutters. Uh, for milling gears particularly and other concave and convex shapes. So, these are what milling uh, operation is capable of doing. If you look at really in two-way milling cutter, there is a face milling option shown here and a slab milling option shown in the other direction. So, here in one case, it is the uh, rotating face of the cutter which is removing the material. In another case, it is actually the, uh, the, the teeth of the milling cutter are present on its sides and the rotating of this with respect to the work piece is removing the material from this particular zone. Okay. And so, there are various uh, uh, formulations which probably at some point of time you have you may have studied in any manufacturing process course which talks about what is the cutting speed for example, what is feed, what is the machining time, metal removal rate, so on and so forth. These are very important from a optimization standpoint which we will be mostly following in this particular course. Although we are not going to delve into the details of how these formulations really came, there is another manufacturing process course for that. But we would be interested to definitely take off these uh, formulations and try to do some uh, you know, optimization, so that we would be able to uh, get a most optimized process in our systems. So, that is what milling uh, processes are. Uh, we also have uh, other manufacturing processes like uh, grinding or uh, you know uh, some things related to uh, surface finishing operations which will probably take up in the next uh, module and also try to see uh, various aspects of how to sequence some of these processes to build uh, manufactured items or parts or machine components. So, with this I would like to finish uh, the module, uh, the current module and uh, in, the, in the next module we are going to take up some of these processes in little more de detail and then start doing the uh, process planning operation for making engineering parts. Thank you.